Hey guys, what's up? This is Paul, the auto technician from Paul Nash Autos Garage. And today I'm working on uh, this piece right here. Uh, it's an Isuzu Trooper uh, 1992. It has a 4JG1 engine, a uh, naturally aspirated one. Uh, the transmission is JC530 T1. Um, it's a four wheel drive, five speed manual uh, transmission. And, uh, and it has a transfer case uh, to transfer torque to the front tank. <coughs> axles or front wheels. Is, uh, we want to measure the health status of the alternator and see if it is working properly. This test can also apply to newer models, newer vehicles uh, that have a, a smart voltage regulator inside the alternator. And this one here is an old school one but the test can still apply to the new one. Now the, for the alternators with the smart regulators <coughs> they communicate to the ECM uh, through a signal, uh, it can be a K-line signal, or it can be a 5-volt signal uh, that is duty cycled, or pulse signal to communicate and tell the ECM the health status or the output, how the alternator is working, uh, the efficiency of the alternator for that matter. The ECM collects that data, it calculates the, the various functions, activities and commands for managing the whole system, and for that reason, the vehicle now can run efficiently uh, without any issues. Now remember that uh, current or voltage is extremely important in running vehicles. Whether it's an old school vehicle or it's a modern vehicle with an ECM, I've already uh, made my jumper wires. So what I want to do is uh, I want to take this one here. It's a, it's a probe. I want to back probe the the output of the alternator, uh, the output post, whereby it uh, outputs uh, between 12.6 uh, and 14.9 uh, volts approximately. So I'm going to hook my back probe uh, at the back of my alternator at the output terminal. Uh, then we're going to check the, the diode ripple. Now this diode ripple test, it will determine the, the health, health status of the diodes uh, and if we have any leaking diodes. Uh, even the stator winding coil, uh, the slip rings, the brushes, all that we are going to determine with this test. So when you come to this alternator, one thing you need to know is that I have a pack of six diodes. And what they do, these diodes, they act as an, an inverter uh, assembly because they invest the AC current that is inducted in the alternator to DC current. So it's kind of like an inverter converter assembly. Uh, just like the, the one that is on the hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to do the testing, uh, follow the procedure, and I'll show you how you can test it. You can test it with uh, advanced tools, and by that I don't mean a scan tool, I'll show you, and you can also do the test with um, a simple multimeter. Now a rule of thumb is that uh, when you're testing with a multimeter, uh, the ripple should never ever cross uh, 4 amps of current. It should, be, it should be below 4 amps. That's the regulated one. And for our <coughs> advanced tool, the rule of the thumb is that uh, the ripple should never ripple above 400 millivolts. Okay, so I'm going to connect my back probing pin right here uh, at the back of my alternator. I use this crocodile uh, clip, the red one, and uh, I also have another one, the, the black one, the black insulator. So I want to show you right now the they have connected it. Okay, so this is my my back probing pin. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to hook it right here. Uh, this one here, this wire here. This is the wire that uh, it outputs the 12 volts from the alternator to the electrical system of the vehicle. So right now, as you can see, my I've already backed up this, this uh, uh, output terminal right here, the B plus. And uh, I'm going to be careful because I don't want to break my uh, back probing needle. Then uh, I'll hook this one here, this crocodile clip right there, and then. I'm going to hook my ground uh, cable 
to the casing of the alternator uh, the appropriate location will be on this one here um, that little uh, metal bracket for holding the alternator in place uh, so right now you can see how my probes are connected so this wire right here this is the positive wire this is the negative wire my ground wire so I want to go inside the vehicle uh, that's where we're going to do the test right from uh, these are my wires uh, they are running along the, the wall of the vehicle going to position them uh, properly all right guys so we're going to use the pico scope uh, i have a little pico right here now for those of you up there the auto technicians out there and you don't have this tool this is a, an amazing tool and uh, this is the future of automobile diagnosis if you don't have this tool uh, you need to get it all right guys so i've already connected my scope uh, uh, to, the, to my laptop and I've opened the software now this one here the BNC lead right here I've connected the positive uh, end of it to the a positive wire coming from the B plus post uh, the output of the alternator and uh, the black wire here is the ground wire and I've connected it to the ground and this ground is connected to the alternator the bracket that holds the alternator uh, to the engine block and that's like connecting it to the alternator casing so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to do my settings right here <coughs> i'm going to shut off this channel uh, this is channel a and open channel b uh, it's off right here you can see i'm connected to b so i'll open channel b right here um, channel b is off i'll open it then i'll select my range uh, now the rule of the thumb as I told you is that uh, this this rippling uh, waveform right here it should never have an amplitude of more than uh, 400 uh, or 500 uh, millivolts that's half a volt like that one there our amplitude should never cross this range here you can go ahead and start our scope right now the scope is running so I'm going to start my engine
testing with the scope uh, and testing with the multimeter. Uh, show you why it's so hard to ever notice that problem. It's an underlying problem actually. Why it is so difficult to, to ever notice it while you're using the multimeter. So right now I've connected my positive multimeter uh, lead at the, the positive B plus post from the alternator. So I'm going to connect my negative ground lead right here. This makes it so hard to ever notice that problem with just a common and ordinary multimeter. And that's why most uh, guys out there, when they test the battery and they see the, it's charging, uh, then after, after a while they encounter charging or alternator issues, like an alternator fails all of a sudden, it's because it had an underlying problem and you didn't notice it while testing it. Okay guys, from that little test that we've done right here, uh, you see that uh, our alternator is not not that uh, okay. Uh, so I'll have to take care of it uh, and fix it very soon. If you are new on this channel, uh, kindly hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell. So when a new video comes out, you'll be the first guys to be notified. Uh, and for the existing subscribers, share and recommend the videos to your friends so that we can grow together.